Welcome back, gamers. Today, we're talking about Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Remember that game? It came out months ago. Remember that? No? Oh, well, we're talking about it. They made a second one of this. This is that. I was going to try to post a video about this game closer to when it actually came out, but then I, I, I got distracted by, by other things, and then I just kind of forgot about it for a while. But this week, I remembered it because, first of all, I just did a reveal trailer for the second DLC character, Zuko. We'll get into that in a bit. But the other thing that was, came out this week is the channel Quentin Reviews just posted a seven-hour video about the Nicktoons Unite games. So Quentin Reviews, he is infamous for posting extremely long videos, uh, sometimes about Nicktoons on content sometimes about whatever and part of the joke is that like the video is is insanely long and why would you make a video that long so i'm just gonna try to go off the coattails of that because i'm sure i'm sure that also covers or at least he mentions at some point the uh the um the all-star brawl games so whatever it maybe this maybe this will be maybe people will remember this game exists for a hot minute and that'll be that's reason enough to make a video about it anyways so the reason i was initially excited for this game is that while i found the first one a little bit underwhelming let's say um, this one promised a story mode featuring Vlad as the main antagonist, the main villain of Danny Phantom. So we were getting some kind of story mode, which I think is fun, and we were getting brand new Danny Phantom content, which, uh, that's, 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 that sounded cool to me. Where do I even start with this game? So going into this game, I was a little bit optimistic. At the very least, I was like, there's more Danny Phantom content, so I'm gonna have, like, something to say whether it's good or bad however uh, as i said before I, I kind of forgot about this game for a little bit and i think that's because although there is some stuff in it that i really like i think the as a product as a whole it's still kind of underwhelming and it didn't leave a huge impression on me in the way that i kind of hoped that it would i do think this game is an improvement upon the first one it has way more content way more uh different modes there's a lot of fun fan favorite characters uh, included in this one like we got ember for example danny phantom fan favorite character who is a cool addition and she's pretty fun to play as too and we have like stuff that should have just been in the first game like actual voice acting wow who would have thought a game that came out in 2023 could include voice acting it's the it's like it's it's like it's the future or something in this game has an actual campaign story mode which makes it feel like way more complete of a product than the first game that just has like here's 20 or so characters and a few stages and that you can fight and that's it like this one it feels just like there's more things to do and more things to do in like a single player sense too so you can like mess around with your friends for a couple hours and then get bored but then you can go back and play it single player and you actually will have things to do so that's like something so the story mode takes on a roguelike type structure so the basic story is that vlad is is trying to take over the multiverse so he's like causing havoc across different dimensions clockwork the danny phantom character who controls time gets involved and is helping our heroes our characters fight against vlad who's been messing with uh different parts of the mul of the nickelodeon multiverse and characters get sucked through portals and stuff and he's mind controlling different characters and so you got to go through and fight all the different characters to free them from Vlad's mind control and then you can play as them in the campaign mode and then fight eventually against Vlad and then if you die clockwork like resets time and you get to try again and some of your progress moves forward there's like a little hub world where you can buy upgrades with various resources you collect while fighting different enemies and so that's kind of how the game like st structures the the roguelike formula so you take on a series of challenges and you try to get a little bit further each time there's a couple different bosses that you can fight but there's also a pretty decent variety of types of stages so sometimes you're fighting uh, another character sometimes you're fighting like swarms of enemies and the enemies are all like different villains and enemies from various different nickelodeon shows a lot of them are from spongebob so you have like jellyfish enemies and then you have like criminals from the bad guy bar 
from the SpongeBob movie that are there. But then you'll have like I think the the octopus ghosts from Danny Phantom. I think they're in there somewhere. You have some Invader Zim enemies. You have Foot Clan ninjas. You have probably some other stuff that I'm forgetting. So that's fun, and you get like a little bit of references to different other Nickelodeon shows. I I do appreciate how many times this game tries to pull in characters and and references to other shows or at least like it's not just like oh we have um el tigre for example is is in here but then also like there's other references to to that show like one of the bosses is a character from his show and stuff so like there's lots of little things like that where they're trying to work in more references to not just the different shows and stuff represented but the like extended universe of each of those characters as well which i appreciate them like working in as much Nickelodeon lore as 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 they can but yeah going back to the different possible stages so you have stages where you fight like swarms of generic enemies you have stages where you're fighting other characters there's also like a targets smash stage which is something that I don't even think was in the last Super Smash Bros so it's fun that they're taking in like other modes from Smash that have been neglected or lesser used in recent years and 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 use and doing something with that idea there's like a platforming stage as well which even that has like a couple different ones which feels like a little bit more exciting than the last smash game which had like in the classic mode you had like one platforming stage but it was the same one every single time and this has like a couple different versions of it and it's like okay that's 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 something they're like trying stuff here and they're trying to include more content plus because it's a roguelike it's like randomized to to a certain level so it's different every single time you go through sure you're still facing a lot of the same types of stuff over and over again there's enough little bits of variety that it changes every time plus there's different branching paths that you can go on so you can decide what types of stages you want to do and there's even a little bit of strategy towards that because like different stages will reward you with different currencies that can be used for different upgrades so you might choose a path where you get a specific type of resource so that you can then spend it at a shop stage later on in that same path so there is a little bit of strategy going into it it's not just completely random and the paths you take aren't completely arbitrary plus there's a hub world where you can like buy different upgrades from a couple different other nickelodeon characters that get to appear here like we have mrs wakeman from my life as a teenage robot she can upgrade your stuff you could talk to clockwork you can get like cosmetic upgrades for the little hub world so all of these different things added together makes this extra content feel like way more than it actually is because it's it's recycled in a way that makes doing the same thing over and over again feel fresh and new and it does some stuff with like the smash brothers type formula that is new enough that it, it kept me engaged far longer than the first game there's enough going on that it's like a perfect game to kind of zone out to while you're like listening to a podcast or something it's also kind of fun to hear characters have little different interactions with each other even if some of them are kind of minor but because the voice actors are actually voicing the characters in this game you get a little moments of the, the different characters interacting which is like part of the whole fun of having a crossover fighting game like there are a lot of elements in here that feel very reminiscent of smash brothers brawls campaign mode the subspace emissary this is the game on the wii that had this really cool story mode with all these different cutscenes where the characters were interacting and it was like this grand epic story with all the nintendo characters existing in this same world and it was super fun and super cool and they never did anything like it again thanks nintendo yeah for some reason nintendo is just like they don't like putting t story modes in their games or like at least they don't like emphasizing that for some reason even though they've done it before but then they've like th they don't like doing it i don't know it's it's weird they're they're weird so it's it's kind of fun to see a mode that's kind of like that in this game like smash just had a couple other modes that were kind of fun i think it was called like smash run or something something like that on the 3ds that mode was really fun and uh you had like this little like kind of platforming section where you collected different upgrades and then you use those upgrades during battles and it was like different every time it had like kind of roguelike elements kind of similar to this and it was cool and then that never came back in any other game smash ultimate had the world of light campaign which was kind of fun 
like a very thin story. It, it had some fun variety in using the spirits in different ways. You could upgrade yourself in different ways. So that was kind of cool, even though that was also just like fight a hundred battles. And then eventually like there's some variety and there's a couple different boss fights here and there. And there was like some challenge in like figuring out the right spirit combination to 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 fight certain challenges but then at the same time like eventually you got upgraded enough that you could like just completely break the game and 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 plow through every every stage so that that had some like fun ideas but not as cool as as subspace emissary in all-star brawl 2 this is still not quite at that same level but it is like (sighs) close ish it's at least like attempting something and trying to use the content available in creative ways to make playing the game over and over again feel fresh and exciting each time. So I appreciate like the effort here, even if it's not like perfectly executed. There is fun stuff here. Like I said, there's different character interactions you get here. One of the things that's kind of fun is that they managed to work in different characters from the other different shows as like shopkeepers and stuff like that. There's like a few different bosses that you get to fight and the bosses are different depending on which playthrough you're going through so you don't know which boss you're going to fight necessarily. There's only five or so bosses I think total but still there's some variety there which is cool and they managed to work in some of the other characters that were in the first game but as playable characters but are not returning as playable characters here so like shredder is now a boss instead of a a playable fighter so that's still kind of cool jimmy neutron's dad is as is here in as a as a shopkeeper that you can go to instead of a playable character like he was in the first game even though jimmy wasn't a playable character in the first game for, for 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 reasons I, I, I don't know, man. The, the memers got to them. I, I can't explain it. But also at the same time, like this, you end up with weird stuff where a, you kind of realize, even though there are like a few different possible interactions with these different characters, you also like weirdly realize how some of these references are super paper thin. Like, for example, the cabbage merchant is is a shopkeeper you can buy like upgrades from who's like a you know he's a fan favorite character from avatar but the joke with him is that he just you know he just shows up a few times throughout the show and he gets his cabbages destroyed every time and then he goes oh no my cabbages and that's his whole character so then here he's like a shopkeeper and you can like talk to him so like suddenly in this game the cabbage merchant has like way more dialogue than he ever had in the entirety of Avatar The Last Airbender. And then you realize like how fucking paper thin his character is because he's just like, hey, Azula, um, want to buy cabbages? And like, that's the conversation. And you're like, cool. Uh, did I did I want this? Is this necessary? <laughs> Like it's, it's, it's fun that, you know, the referencing, like there, there's obviously people that are fans of these shows. And so they're like, we got to put in all the like references to like fan favorite moments and fan favorite characters, but like, you know, you know, you know why, <laughs> but there is like fun details in here. Like I like how Garfield's dialogue boxes are all thought balloons. Cause that's how his, his dialogue appears in the comic that Garfield is from. Remember that? So, I don't know, that's 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 kind of cool, I guess. But at the same time, there's still, like, a lot of shortcomings that this game has. Even though there's stuff in this game that I like and that I think is interesting, I feel like it, it still kind of falls a little bit flat on a lot of the, like, really basic levels. For example, uh, this game runs badly, like, 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 pretty badly. When you're just fighting other, other fighters, it runs okay. But one, one of the things that, like, is really criminal about this game is the loading screens. The loading screens are so long and they like, well, like the loading bar will like freeze often in ways that you're like, is did the game crash? Is it okay? It, there's not much that it's loading. So it's like, I don't understand why it takes so long to load. Cause there's only like 20 or so characters in this game to begin with and there's not that many different stages. So like it shouldn't take this long to load. And it's also extremely, frustrating in the campaign mode when you have to load every single little stage that you're going to and you're going through a lot of little stages to 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 play through this mode it makes it take like 
it what feels like twice as long to play like one full round of this mode because of how long the loading screens are. And sometimes you're loading like a little in between level where you just get a little treasure chest and you get some resources and then that's the whole level. And then you have to watch this like long ass loading screen for, for what? Like a small platform and one treasure box? Why does that take so long to load? I've also had this game just fully crash a few times while playing it. And I'm playing on the PS4, which apparently is the like the good version of the game. Like apparently if you're playing on Switch, it runs even worse. And I'm like, it already doesn't run great on, on here. And it's like, how? How does this game not run well? It's like, it's not that complicated. Smash Ultimate exists and it's a way more complex game and it's got way more characters, way more going on and it runs great. And that's on the Switch. So I don't understand why this PS4 game Stuff that can run like God of War Ragnarok really well can't even can't run this game about cartoon characters. Like it doesn't even. It's not like the graphics are that impressive, and I don't even need them to be. It's cartoon. It's like okay if they're if the char- if the characters are cartoony and you know stylized and and that's fine. I don't really necessarily even need it to look amazing but it's like it shouldn't crash this often (laughs) for what this game is i'm also still a little bit disappointed by the roster of this game i think there are more fan favorite characters included in this game and more characters that i specifically care about like we have not only danny phantom of course but ember as well and i think that's a really fun choice ember's super fun to play as we got azula and azula is fun to play as we got, like, My Life is a Teenage Robot. We got Manny Rivera, who's an obscure but appreciated choice. We, got, we finally got fucking Jimmy Neutron, which is great. But there's still, like, weird missing characters, too. Where the fuck is Timmy Turner? <laughs> like, Fairly Odd Parents ran for, like, 40 years. I, it might be still going. I don't know. They keep, like, it, it seems to not die, that show, for some reason. And where the hell is Timmy Turner? I don't know. He was, like, a main character in all of the original Nicktoons crossover games. And, uh, where the fuck is he? Like, it's it's weird. There's also several characters that were in the first game, but are not in the second game. Which is, like why like it's not like the roster is so big that they can't contain them all it's not like there's a crazy amount of more characters in this one i think it's almost the same number but like one of the weird things in this one is that so in the first game they had oh i'm going to i'm going to get it wrong in the first game they had leonardo and michelangelo of the ninja turtles and also april o'neil and then later on they added shredder as dlc Okay, I like April, I like Shredder, I'm glad those guys are in the game, but it's really fucking weird to include the nin- the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and not include all four. Like, those those guys are a package deal, it's, it, it, it like, if, if you're gonna include them in the game, you, you, you kind of have to put all four of them in. And I get that that makes the roster, like, very Ninja Turtle heavy, but, like... It's it's just one of those things that like you gotta you gotta you gotta make an exception for for the for them if you're gonna include the turtles you kind of need to have all four turtles they're all the main character sorry so this game instead of doing that <laughs> instead of doing that um, they included Donatello and Raphael and Leonardo and Michael e are gone so all four of the turtles are in a Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl game, but you can't play as all four of them in a single game. Like, in this one, that should have been... They should have just added... They just should have just had all four of them, right? Like, oh, but you get the other ones this time. It's like, I shouldn't have to get... Like, I should just get all of them. I should just get all of them all times. It's it's a it's a bonkers choice, and I, again, I'm, it's probably like, oh, well, but then there will be too many. It's like, well, there, then there should, then have more characters. Just have more characters then. Because they also cut other characters. Sandy's not in this one. Instead, we have Squidward and Plankton, or sorry, Mecha Plankton. You know, that's fun. That's fine. I'm okay with having, you know, Squidward and, and Plankton. Those are main SpongeBob characters, and uh, they should be included. But Sandy should probably also be included still. And, like, we get Azula this time, but we lose Toph. Toph was really broken in the first game, so maybe that's part of it. But, like, still, it's like, there's not that many characters that it's like, oh, it's impossible 
to fit them all in. It's like, it shouldn't be. It's not that big of a game. The other kind of shortcoming of this one is some of the voice acting. Voice acting is 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 overall solid. It's not going to blow your mind or anything, but at least, like, it's there. If you watch a lot of animation, you notice a lot of the same voice actors over and over again. So you, so you do, a, so there's a lot of characters included here that it's like, right, you're here because you're played by Greg, Greg Griffin or Tara Strong, and they voice the majority of, of female characters in all animated things. So it's, like, really easy to just, like, throw in a couple of their extra characters because they're already in the booth. They can already record some extra lines for, for, some, for some bosses or side characters or whatever. Fair enough. So actually looking at the credits, I am now more confused. Frida, a character from El Tigre, is here and voiced by Grey Delisle. But Azula is apparently not voiced by Grey. According to the credits, she's voiced by Susie Young. But she sounds so, cl like, extremely close to Azula. So I just assumed it was Grey. But apparently it's not. Which is more confusing because Grey is in the game. So they could have got her to voice Azula. But they didn't. For some reason... But then also, the person they did get sounds so much like her that I didn't even notice. So, I, what is even happening? Then there's, like, some stuff where it's, like, I'm I'm okay with them being a little different. Like, Aang is not voiced by Zack Tyler, which is fine because he's a full adult now and he sounds different. So, you get a kid, to, you get a different kid to voice Aang. That's okay. I'm okay with that. But then I think Cora is like someone else also for some reason, and it's like just get just get Jan just get Jane Varney. She's around still. Like w why not? There's other weird ones too. Like Clockwork is in this game. Unfortunately, of course, David Carradine is no longer with us because he uh, taking a look at his his grip, and he. He really needs to choke up. <laughs> well, we won't, we won't, we won't, we don't have to get into that. But the guy that got to voice Clockwork, like, does a pretty good impression of David Carradine's voice for that character. If you weaken me enough to return to the timeless star dial, there may yet be hope. So, like, good? But then Vlad's, like, the main villain, and he's not voiced by his actor, even though his actor is alive still. And not only that, but he does, like, a bad job. Like, he doesn't sound anything like Vlad. He just sounds like a different guy. Spare me your speeches, Daniel. The only reason you beat me is because you had a literal master of time on your side, and you know it. It's like, just get the real guy, and she can't for some reason, which, I, I don't know, maybe he was busy, I don't know. But let's say, let's say you couldn't for some reason, even though he's around. Then at least get someone who sounds kind of like Vlad, <laughs> you know? So, it's just like weird inconsistencies like that, where it's like, I feel like if you tried a little harder, you could have gotten more of the correct voices, or at least people that sounded like the real voices. I don't know. I appreciate that it's there, but it's still like there should be more of them still. It's a lot of half measures this game, so I I don't know. Overall, it's a really solid improvement on the first game. Definitely get this one instead if you're interested in all, but I wouldn't recommend buying it for full price, even though full price is discounted. We'll get, actually, I want to get into the, some of the pricing. So, okay, here's here's what it says on the website. Pricing may vary depending on your country. $50 for the main game. I think that's still probably too high, even though full price games are more than that. But whatever. Fine. And you can probably find it on sale now or used for much cheaper than that. So, whatever. But then the game tries to pull this, like... Oh, well, you're probably also going to want to get the Seasons Pass. What does the season Pass include? You get four DLC characters that are going to be added later. The characters are, are now all announced, but when the game first launched, none of them were announced. You didn't know who any of them were going to be, but they were still asking for you to give $25 for four additional characters. $25, which is um, half of the game's full price. So that's, like, not a great deal, first of all. Or you could buy the Deluxe Edition for $70, only $20 more than the main game, and you'd get all of the additional characters. Or, or, you could buy the Ultimate Edition for $80, $30 more than the regular price game, which includes all of the, the Season Pass stuff, plus a bonus costume for every character. And that's it. 
that's worth 10 more dollars for some reason. Those are both insane options and I truly hope that no one bought them, especially for this like license game that is like, even though I feel like it does have passionate people behind it, it's clearly like a low budget thing slapped together to try to make a quick buck. At first you're like, oh, well, they're at least they're not charging full price, but then they're trying to upsell you with like barely more content. Plus it's like, like you could just add, you could just add extra DLC characters later for free. Like you don't have to, you don't have to charge for that. The first game even added Shredder as a DLC character later on for for free. You could just you could just get him. You could just get him. And they did. And yes, they did include other uh, characters later. But it wasn't like uh, they weren't trying to sell you up front. It was just like it was like later on they added some more characters that you could pay for or not. They weren't trying to like trick anyone to buying them uh, r before they were even like announced what they were. Anyways, now the characters have all been announced. I think Mr. Krabs is currently available, which is the first one. The second one is Zuko, who just got a, an announcement trailer. Mr. Krabs looks looks fine. I haven't played him. But, uh, you know, it's another Spongebob character. All the Spongebob characters, I think, are like, you know, yeah, those are popular characters. It makes sense to add them. Zuko, it's cool that he's there. We already have Zula, so like, you know. But Zuko, you know, everyone likes Zuko. He looks fun to play as. He's got his swords also. All the firebending moves are cool. They look like they're, they're, there's some references to, you know, specific moves from the show. He does the dancing dragon move at one point. It's cool. I like Zu I like Zuko. I don't know. It's just like okay, yeah, but it's not like blowing my mind you know, enough to 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 warrant me spending more money to play as this character in this game that's not even amazing and doesn't run very well. You know, and the other characters are I believe that's Rocksteady of Bebop and Rocksteady from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Again, like you know, sure, sure, but it's not like blowing my mind and Iroh from Avatar as well another firebender so there'd be three fucking firebenders which is fine like I like all those characters but it's like you know cool that's it you know like like it's just it's just it's just like I don't know that that's worth $25 to play as those four characters so I wanted to take a look at the pricing of the Smash Brothers DLC characters for comparison but after doing actual research and math, I realized that the pricing is actually much closer to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl than I first thought. So the Nickelodeon character pass, $25 for four characters, which works out to about $6.25 for each character, where the Smash Brothers fighters pass, the first one was $31.49 for five characters, the second one was $37.79 for six characters, which works out to about $6.3 per each character. You can also buy the characters individually. For Nickelodeon, the characters are $7 each, and for Smash, they're $7.55 each. So on a per character basis, the Nickelodeon characters are actually a little bit cheaper than the Smash ones. However, I will still argue that the Smash characters are a slightly better deal because number one, in addition to getting new characters, you're also getting a new stage for each character, which adds a lot of variety to the overall gameplay. In All-Star Brawl, you're just getting the new characters and that's it. Number two, the Smash characters are almost all from new series or new games that aren't represented yet. So it feels more exciting when something brand new is added to the game versus just like another SpongeBob or Avatar character. Number three, if you care compare the prices per character to the overall price of the game, it's a better price percentage wise. The Nickelodeon characters are about 13% of the overall price of the game, where the Smash Brothers characters are only 9% of the total price of the game, which I think is what makes it feel like a better deal for the Smash characters when like $25 for four characters feels like a lot when the game is already only $50. That's that's half the price of the game and you're only getting four characters where like $31 for five new characters is something like 40% of the game and you get more characters. That's that That feels like a better deal even if it's technically slightly more expensive. Plus Smash is just like a, a, a stronger game overall so I think it's I think it's still the better deal but anyways it, that the, that's the math the other weird thing about this game which I mentioned in another video a while ago the ps4 version and the Xbox version came out physically um, but the switch version was only released digitally 
So if you want to buy the game on Switch, you have to pay full price. You can't find it like used or for discounted somewhere, or you can't like buy it physically and then play through it and then be bored with it and then like sell it because it's just digitally and it's just on your Switch forever now. And I don't understand why. Like, the game already exists. The first game was uh, available physically for the Switch. It's not like the game is so big that it can't fit on a Switch cartridge because Smash Ultimate fits on a Switch cartridge and that's a way bigger game. And it's a game that's, like, good. It runs well and, you know, has a lot more time and effort put into it. Some of the, like, lackluster elements of this game become a lot more clear when you realize this game is produced by game mill entertainment who uh they made um they made that one king kong game that everyone was memeing on because it was so broken and unfinished <laughs> that it was like it's like how did this how did this happen it was like golem levels of like how did how did you do how did how was this allowed and they've done a lot of licensed games, and a lot of them are, like, not that good. That seems to be their 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 MO of, like, really, really low-effort, low-budget licensed games that, like, some of which look like they have, like, like, I think Nickelodeon All-Star has a lot of people that are passionate about these characters and stuff and want to make a good game and, and want to do cool stuff and have, like, cool references to, to, to moments from the different shows and stuff. But the, like, final product just doesn't have the money or time put into it that it needs to to be like actually really really good alana pierce did a video a while ago like speculating that because this seems to be like a bigger trend going of like really broken and unfinished games releasing at full price or near full price and also having like dlc stuff that is like not good like Gollum had like a bunch of dlc that was like you can have e emotes for like five dollars it's like why is that just not in the game already but she was speculating that like maybe they're doing this on purpose maybe they're making kind of bad games on purpose so that people will like meme on them two games from game mill that were probably created under the exact same circumstances that got so much attention for being bad watch whatever game mill's next game is that's all i'm trying to say and that'll be enough to get people to buy it just for like joke videos on YouTube and that'll be enough to like cover the cost. It's like, oh, I gotta see, it. Gollum's this bad? Well, I gotta see how bad it is. Now I'm gonna check it out. And that'll give it enough clout and enough attention that even though people are making fun of it, it still makes money because they like put so little money into the game to begin with. It doesn't need to make that much money to, to, to technically turn a profit. And I don't have the full numbers on this, but it sounds, like it could be true, right? <laughs> like under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. The games industry is kind of in a in a not great and not super great place right now. We are getting good games. Like I mentioned God of War Ragnarok earlier, and that game is really good and it came out at full price but it's like totally worth it you could probably get it cheaper now and they just released a, a full dlc mode that's that's a roguelike thing and apparently it has like new story elements too i haven't played it yet but apparently it's pretty good and it's free it's just they just added like a whole new mode to the game for free and you already get a full game that's good on top of that if you buy it. It's like, so, like, you, there are good games that exist <laughs> that are out there. But but you, it feels like more and more you hear about these, like, games that have, like, really predatory DLC stuff. And games as a service. And you gotta buy the expansion pass. And you gotta buy the battle pass. And you gotta, you gotta get the... And it's full of microtransactions and all that kind of stuff. And it's like... Remember, remember Nicktoons Unite when it was just a game that came out and like it was it wasn't the best game ever, but it fully came out and it had voice acting and it was a complete game and they didn't try to like upsell you. It was just a, it was just a it was just a game and you could buy it and play it and that was the full thing. And Timmy Turner was there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of going off the rails here. I've been going on for way too long. Um, I wanted to like fully finish the story later, sometime later this week to at least say that I did. Cause so I wanted to talk more about the story mode, but like, there's not really much to say. Vlad's the bad guy and you got to fight him. It's kind of fun that he's there and that there's like so much Danny Phantom stuff in this game. But at the end of the game, it's like, uh, I wish, I wish that this was a much stronger game overall. 
Um, so I don't know if I have more to say than that. I think there's some really good ideas. I, I like that they're trying stuff and bringing back modes and, and elements from other Smash games that were kind of forgotten about, like actually doing a full story mode. But it's like, man, if this, if this game's loading times actually were reasonable, it would be such a much better experience overall. And, uh... I don't know why they can't just put in the effort to make it run decent. It should be it should be possible. We know it's possible to have a game run okay. <laughs> you know? Did I have some fun with this game? Yeah, I'd be lying if if I said I didn't. Um I do think there's a lot of stuff in here that has a lot of potential and I and like you can tell there are people that work on this game that are passionate about these Nickelodeon characters and these different series and that care about it I just wish that like they were allowed to you know spend actual time on something to make it good and that they weren't trying to like trick you into paying more for a game that should be cheaper than it is even at a even at a not full price so I don't think I can recommend buying this game I don't know if you are really really curious to see some more of Danny Phantom characters or you really want to play as Azula or whatever I guess it's kind of fine I guess it's fine for that like I said it's it's a perfectly acceptable game to zone out to while you're listening to a podcast or something but try to find it at a discount or buy a physical copy so you can return it if you don't like it or you can sell it or whatever. Don't buy the season's pass because I don't think it's worth it. I don't think that four new characters that may or may not be fun to play as is worth $25. Don't buy the, ex- the deluxe ex- the ultimate edition or whatever the fuck it's called where you get extra costumes. That's not worth it. That should just be in the game. So I don't know. While this is still an improvement on the first game and there's stuff in it that I kind of like. I don't know that I can recommend supporting it because it's just like it's you got you got to you got to you got it's 2023. You got to try harder. You got to try harder guys. Tears of the Kingdom is out like the bar the bar the bar the bar is higher than this. Even in even in the early 2000s the bar was higher than this for licensed games. So that's this. That's this video. I'm sorry I talked for too long. What do you what do you think? Leave a comment or whatever. Did you play this game? Are you interested in this at all? I wish I could give more of a recommend, but it's just not quite it's not it's not there. It's not quite there. That's that's it. Thank you for watching. Check out uh, my other videos about Nicktoons games and stuff. I'll see you next time with something else. Bye-bye.